In this video we're going to sort out the rear subframe, going to get that cleaned up and also sort out all the components for the rear suspension. Okay so I've got the rear radius arm just on the bench here. Um, the first thing I need to do is apply some heat to this end here where the stub axle goes through. Um, this isn't the actual one I'm going to use, this one is just one which I ordered um, and a new old stock part but the whole thing is rusted and it's just a bit useless so that was a waste of um, $20. Um, I do have the correct one um, and what I've actually done, I've actually put it in the freezer overnight so the temperature of my freezer is minus uh, 17 degrees Celsius. Um, what I plan to do is heat up this side. Now I've already done the other side, the right hand side. Um, with that piece heated up with the blowtorch, that at minus 17 are pretty much just slotted straight in. No issues, no dramas at all. Um, the one that's in the freezer at the moment has the retaining pins. So heat up the inside, get the piece out of the freezer, put it in, tap it in with the mallet and it will just drive it straight in. So let's um, start heating this up. Okay, let's talk sandblasters for a minute. Um, this um, is the unit which I've recently purchased and the advantage of this one is that it obviously first of all holds a lot more um, media, media in there compared to any other unit and also because it's pressurised um, it helps the uh, flow of the media come out at a much higher velocity um, compared to just using something like one of these. Um, I have tried this one a few times but um, the hose on it, if you shorten the hose it probably would work a lot better. So inside a, a, a cabinet it would be probably more ideal. Um, the other unit I've had to play around with was this one here. So just a top loading gravity fed unit. Uh, that worked okay but it just, um, you, you go through the grit so quickly um, for a little small job it would be okay but it just uses it up so quickly so that's why um, I've got the buckets of uh, media I'm this time using um, crushed garnet so we'll give that a try and see how it works um, I made a start on here so that's all taken back to bare metal I just need to finish it and just do the whole thing first
Okay, so let's take a look at these radius arms. Um, I just want to point out the differences between a mini and a moak radius arm. So first of all, this one here, this dirty one is off a mini. Um, one obvious difference, you'll notice that the length is a lot shorter, or length is a lot longer compared to a mini. Um, that's because the moke has 13 inch wheels. Um, you'll notice that this pin here is for the, um, the damper or the shock absorber. That lines up at the same spot. But in this case here, it's just a stud that gets um, wound in there. And the hub um, stub axle, that's the same. Everything else is the same there. Uh, one other difference as well on the moke, on a mini, um, one end will have a bearing. The other end will have a brass bush that needs to be reamed. Um, I've put apart or put together this side here. Um, on the moke, both sides actually have a bearing. So to change the, um, the, the pin on here is a lot easier because you don't have to go with the effort of reaming. You just take out the old um, bearings, clean it up and then put the new ones in if they need changing. Um, it's always good to change those. So the method I used to remove the old bearings, um, there's the old bearing here, and then I just tack weld a bolt to the top of it, and then to get to remove it, just put a socket over it, some washers as a spacer, and then um, put a bolt on, wind the bolt up, and then it obviously pulls it out as you tighten the bolt. So that was the easiest way to do it on there. Um, you notice on this one, it's been modified at some point. Um, this is for the left-hand side, and it's probably because the stud may have broken and then for whatever reason in the past um, they weren't able to get a replacement stud so they've drilled just the whole thing through so now it just has to be fitted with a bolt um, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue the the brake plate fits on there so there should be enough clearance but if there's any issues we'll sort that out later so we're sort of at the stage now where we can start putting this um, subframe back together. Um, but there still are a few bits and pieces I still need. I've got all the bushings, um, brake, brake lines. I've got to get that sorted out too. All right, so I've just started to um, sandblast a few of these other parts to help mount the material to the subframe. Uh, I've got myself one of these units now, this um, benchtop sandblaster. This is a 93 litre unit. Um, the, the ones which are slightly larger, they have a side opening. This one, you just open up through the top. So it's good for any um, smaller parts like this, so I don't have to set up the um, sandblaster, the main one, outside. So this unit is very handy. That can sort of just stay out while I'm working on parts. So what I need to do now is just get these primed and then painted. So we're going to make a start on assembling the components of the rear subframe. Um, we'll only, I'll only be able to get to a certain point when I'm going to have to stop and then wait for more parts to come. But I'm going to start installing things as I go. So first thing we need to install are the trunnions. Um, Actually, before we begin, I just wanted to point out a couple of things about the subframe. I don't believe there's many differences between this subframe for a Moak than a Mini subframe. Um, it's currently upside down on the bench at the moment. Um, underneath, sort of here, there are extra pieces welded on just to support it. But I do believe that some Minis may have had that too. But you'll see that when it gets flipped over. All right, so we'll start by installing these trunnions. Um, on UK model Minis, UK built Minis, they use the upper type, which is a, the holes a lot larger, and you'll require two larger bolts. But on the Australian built minis and mokes, um, each of the four corners use um, these standard trunnions. So let's get those fitted first, and each one just has a couple of bushes in there. So this is the left side of the subframe, but just keep in mind it is upside down, and the way that these trunnions get installed, uh, the rubber bushes just sort of sit in there. I'll put a bit of grease on there, but the way it goes, um, the taller side goes towards the back of the vehicle. So this is the back of the vehicle, that end is towards the front. So 
it will be bolted on like that. And then that bolts to the um, underside where the tray is, so or to the, the boot of the actual car. So keep in mind that it is upside down, the, the subframe's upside down, but that is the position it will go. Um, on top of that, it's gonna have a washer and then a nylock nut will go on there. All right, so now before you put the radius arm on, we've got to put this trunnion on here as well. So again, this one needs to be installed the correct way as well. So um, it will mount um, to the actual, so the actual vehicle is here, the heel board is over in here. And then the larger section needs to go towards the top smaller bit towards the bottom so again keep in mind that this subframe is upside down so that's the position it will need to go in okay so the kit to replace the main um, shaft of this radius arm um, you just use a standard mini kit but then you need to also get the additional roller bearing because um, the difference between this I've mentioned already the difference between this um, radius arm and one of a mini is that um, both ends contain a roller bearing so that you don't use the bush so this actually comes with a brass bush but um, it will not be used um, I'll still hang on to that because um, that would be useful for anyone wanting to use do a mini uh, let's get that opened up ready. So the way this goes in, um, this end here with the grease nipple, that obviously goes on this side here, which is the same side as the uh, wheel stub to get the actual hub on. So what we need to do, just, just take off the um, bolts and washers. And it goes back on the same water that's there. Um, that washer, you've got, you got that groove inside there. That goes to the inside. Take these rubber seals off. So the way it's packaged, um, this end's got the roller on it. Because normally on a Mini, this end here would be the one that gets reamed. So what we can do is install the bearing first just in that end and the way it goes on one end of this bearing is curved but the other end is not um, I can grease it once it's in there so the curved side goes outwards And to get that in, you can um, use a long um, bolt thread and then tighten it down with a nut to push it in. Okay, so once you've got the bottom end in, which is closest to the, um, the part that the suspension joins to, or the inside, um, you then need to insert the plastic tube. Um, it's tapered, so it goes in this direction. So. If you don't put that in first and you put the bearing in, obviously it won't um, be able to get in. So I can just slide this whole piece in. Um, can put some grease on here now. I might just put a little bit just so there's something on there. But obviously um, once it uh, gets installed, that little hole there is where um, grease will come out of anyway.
we can leave, um, as long as that plastic tube's inside, we need to still get that bearing in. It's probably easier to do it without this in the way anyway. Just put that to the side for now, and then we'll get, I'll get this bearing. Okay, so now I've got um, both of them bearings tapped in. Just um, add a bit of um, grease into that one. Okay, so now I can just put that um, main pin back in there. Uh, just make sure you get it the right way so the grease nipple is on the outside. Okay, then the seal at the end, I think they're, they're identical, so it doesn't matter which one went where. Uh, it's easy to put the rubber on that washer first. Okay, there we go. And I'll just put that on there for now so I don't lose it. And then same with the other end, just um, actually what I can do is, uh, where is that bracket? Because um, you've got to put that on first anyway. So that can just sit on there for now, then it's ready to go into the subframe. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to install this um, radius arm now. So I'll undo this bolt, sorry, the nut. And The hole which they fit into is this hole right there. So in theory, if that slides in, that plate will just sit there like that. So that's how that sits in. Um, I'm gonna have to get some cable ties or something just so it can attach onto there so it doesn't fall while I'm bolting it up. I nearly forgot to mention just one of the last differences to point out um, on a Moke radius arm. You'll notice that there's this little hole here. You can actually see in there the actual tube inside. Um, whether or not it's just part of the manufacturing or it is meant to be an inspection port, but it has this little cap to clip on there. Um, because grease shouldn't be visible there. If it does, it means the um, tube is leaking. Okay, all right, so I've got that side, the left side on now, and I will just continue what I've done, but just on the other side. Okay, so now I've got the um, right hand side radius arm on. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. In the next video, I'll probably get the brakes set up on each side, the drum brakes. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching my videos.